अब नहीं है हिचके जाना मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना अब नहीं है हिचके जाना मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ मनोदर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू नमस्कार आई एम हरप्रीत कौर एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू आर लाइव एंड इंटरक्टिव सेशन ऑफ मनोदर्पण परिचर्चा Well, we all know that Parichacha sessions are held under the beautiful initiative of Ministry of Education as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan for providing psychosocial support to parents, teachers, and of course our students across the country. And today, the topic that we have taken up is extremely interesting and relevant, something that concerns us all. Today, we are, you know, we are going to have a discussion on the topic. transform your aspirations into achievements well there are uh, three important terms transform aspirations and achievements so we will know each and everything about these three terms this whole topic in this particular discussion so right now you are watching us live on our facebook page at ncert official since it's a live and interactive discussion so if you have any questions feel free to get in touch with us you can call us and our e vidya phone number is 8800440559 we also have a manodarpan national tele helpline number for you which is 8448440632 we also have a dedicated website for all the people out there who have anything related to psychological issues if you have any doubts any concerns anything that's bothering you we have a particular website on which you can get the help and the necessary information as well that website is www.manudarpan.education.gov.in and now let me tell you the topic once again this is transform your aspirations into achievements well if we talk about the dictionary meaning of aspirations we know that um, you know it is a strong de desire to achieve something high or great in life this is what aspiration is but what do we mean by aspiration here in this context when we are talking about converting them to achievements so we have our panelist here you know who will tell us about different aspects that we are going to cover in this discussion and how aspiration and achievements are different and how we can transform one to the another So let's welcome all our panelists one by one. We are joined by Professor Anil Kumar K. Sir is Professor of Education from R I E N C E R T Mysuru. Welcome to the session, sir. Namaskar. We are also joined by Professor I P Gorama. Ma'am is Professor of Education from R I E N C E R T Mysuru. Namaskar and welcome to the session. Thank you and namaskar. And we have with us Dr. Shalini Ayappa, ma'am is associate professor and head from Department of Psychology, Saint Aloysius, Mangalore. Welcome to the session, ma'am. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaste. And last but not the least, we also have with us Miss Manoja Jacob, ma'am is consultant clinical psychologist from Etc. Career Counseling, Trivandrum, Kerala. Welcome to the session ma'am namaskar Thank you namaskar thank you Right so after this brief introduction about all the panelists we are now going to start this question and answer round and my very first question is to professor Anil Kumar sir i would request you to kindly let us know that what exactly we are going to learn you know in this discussion what aspects are we going to cover and also what is the importance of this topic that we have taken up today 
ओके जी थैंक यू हरप्रीत जी जी ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड व्यूअर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टाइटल ट्रांसफॉर्म योर एस्पिरेशंस इनटू अचीवमेंट्स चिल्ड्रन होप यू आर ऑल वेरी सीरियस अबाउट योर स्टडीज इजंट इट यस वेरी गुड are you really enjoy the learning in schools i'm sure oh. they are yes they are even you know putting on the chat box yes <laughs> almost everyone is telling that yes they are really enjoying the learning in classrooms great let me ask a very silly question <laughs> why are you getting educated hmm that's a very important question not a silly one and i'm sure all our viewers and students those who are watching they can you know put their comments on our facebook page since we are going live there i'm not finding any answer okay some of them are now replied i could see oh someone wrote that to acquire knowledge to earn money oha oh, to do some jobs later in life okay okay somebody wrote that to become a scientist in future to become a pilot oh, so many options are coming doctor teacher advocate somebody wrote that to join later in you know institute like iim and iit and to start a business oh someone wrote that to become a writer to become a good citizen yeah really we appreciate education is to make good citizens for our country someone also wrote i think uh, shruti has wrote uh, to become a collector oh so many answers students we appreciate you that you have certain you know ambitions or aspirations in your life that has been reflected through your responses many people have replied but let me take for this discussion the last one miss shruti is you know aspiration she wrote that she wants to become a collector all right she is studying now and later in the future life she wants to become a collector now my question is to shruti do you know how to become a collector how can you become a collector or let me precisely ask which competitive examination one should qualify to become a collector i think sudhi is unaware about it but her aspiration is to become a collector doesn't matter okay students any one of you if you know the answer please you know type in the chat box someone wrote neat is it a correct answer yes someone is writing that no it is not a correct answer and it is to become a medical profession is it not like doctors and allied professionals somebody wrote ssb no that also not true yeah one correct answer is coming that is upsc that means union public service commission examination in short we used to tell that upsc but upsc conducts many other examinations also this is not only one you know which is related to you know collector or ias no okay anyone can name that particular examination no one any guess please try okay it is called the indian civil service examination every year upsc conduct this particular examination but again all those who are participating in this particular examination is not going to become a nias officer you know that yes once you qualify in good ranks maybe you know below 100 then i think you will get an entry in indian administrative service those who have not trained that rank then they can also join to various prestigious position such as ips irs etc let me ask another question to shruti first 
Sudhi, do you know the min what is the minimum eligibility required to become an IAS or to write the Indian Civil Service examination? I think she is unaware. I think she is studying in the secondary schools. Our schools do not have proper career guidance. That could be a reason that she is unaware about all these things. But her aspiration is live and you know, she wants to become a, a collector. So students, the eligibility, minimum eligibility requirement is only a graduation. That means you should qualify a three year or more duration that undergraduate program offered by any university or an institution. They will provide you degrees such as BSc, BA, BCom, BTech, MBBS, etc. Now, when you see the pass percentage in the Indian Civil Service examination, basically they will conduct at two levels. One is called the prelims, which include an aptitude test also, and then main. Students, the UPSC prelims 2023 shows that out of 13 lakhs candidate appeared for the examination, only 14,000 candidates secured the necessary marks to qualify for UPSC mains. This is the second largest examination in our country after me. 13 lakhs, 14 lakhs, 15 lakhs, like that. Many of those graduate you know, candidates are aspiring for Indian civil service. And do you know how many have been qualified for the, I don't know, through the mains? The latest report shows that only a total of 1,016 candidates have been recommended for appointment by the UPSC at a different you know, uh, positions like IAS, IPS, IRS, etc. Students, when you look upon this pass percentage, it is not even one percentage of the people who have totally appeared for this examination. To be more precise, if thousands people are people are aspiring, all right, only about seven to eight are qualifying the main examinations. And as I told earlier, if the rank comes below hundred only, you have a good chance to be in the Indian Administrative Service. And when we calculate that percentage, then you will understand that among ten thousand of candidates only one may get in, get an entry into that. I hope this narration brings you that how difficult it is to crack the Indian Civil Service examination. Students, are you really aware about the, the difficulties or the task ahead to crack this particular examination? All right, Sruti, again, I am asking to you, suppose you are not going to get an entry to this, what would happen? Yes, yes, your aspiration you are not able to fulfill, is it not? So in order to fulfill your aspiration, what do you need to do? Yes, you have to work very hard. You should have a determination determination to transform your aspiration into your achievements. Mm. That is precisely our topic for discussion today. As Sruti, we could see that many of you, you have various aspirations in your life. Sometimes, you know, we may tell it as your dream or you may call it as your goal in life also. Children, during your school stage itself, you need to plan for your future career, future life goal also. Is it not? Yes. One should have high aspirations also so that you know you can reach to high potentials. You can achieve those. Children, let me borrow our late Dr. Abdul Kalam's words. 
our former president of india who had ignited many candidates or students like you through his inspiring words he usually tell to the children that dream 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 big so that your dream would eventually transform into thoughts and actions shaping your lives and world around you let me unto according to him he continues to tell that according to him the dreams are those which comes while we were we are sleeping but dreams are not those when you do not sleep before fulfilling them students have you got the meaning yes so if you have such aspirations or dream in your life only when you achieve that you will go for good sleep till then you will try for achieving it students it is not very easy to dream what you want to become in future and fulfilling your aspirations unless you are really understood yourself yourself in course the pic- picture about you then only you can have a realistic dream or a realistic aspiration which can be later achievable in your life thus a lot of planning is required for you at an early stage itself don't think that you are alone we all are with you like the teachers the school counselors parents and even your friends and peers could be or can help you or they can extend the helping hand in order to pe- discuss this particular aspect that is how to transform your aspirations into achievement in detail we are fortunate to have a group of experts each one has got many years of expertise in the field particularly helping the children to plan their career and future life students i am sure that this interaction is going to be more beneficial and fruitful for you and it will help you to make your aspirations into a reality remember children there is no shortcut to success your determination hard work and dedication will pay back to you with these words let me conclude now wishing you all a great success and satisfaction in your life thank you over to hardeep ji thank you so much professor anil for answering my question and you quoted dr kalam that indeed dreaming is the first step to achieve those goals and aspirations that are there in your heart and i believe that uh, one should also you know try to discover things uh, along with you know aspiring for them so explore yourself what exactly you want to do in life be very clear about it and then do make efforts to convert your dreams and aspirations into a masterpiece of reality well if you think you can you can and if you think you can't probably you are right anyway um, now let's move on to professor gorama professor gorama i have a you know second question to you uh, please tell us more about aspirations so we have you know understood what exactly they are and uh, what all in bits and pieces we need to do to achieve those dreams that are there or that burning desire that we're having in our heart so please tell us what are aspirations all about what do we mean by them and uh, why aspirations are really important in a student's life yeah thank you harpreet hello dear children i am sure you are hooked to the program because we had a very good beginning where i am so happy to hear about your aspirations it's so good that you could uh, you were able to give out when the question was asked so first of all we should have aspiration it's so interesting to know and i am really motivated to take the discussion forward because i am going to focus upon what professor anil kumar expressed by taking your own aspirations once we have aspiration how do we move towards actualizing it that is to achieve 
success by having aspirations. Let me just start with uh, some of the words associated with the aspiration. Yes, we do use the term uh, dream very closely with aspiration, but there is a slight difference. We all know we all dream. We dream when we sleep and also we dream when we are awake. But the dream is something which we want to reach somewhere, but we are not very clear how we have to reach there. So dreams are the end point, but it does not give the actual steps to move towards dream. And also we associate aspirations with the desires. Desires are something which is very deep in us. It's an instinct, actually. We have it as an instinct. All of us have, and you, as you know, as, a, as a small child, also will have certain desires. As we grow, it changes. And hope is another term which is associated. A hope actually gives us the expectation that we will be able to reach towards our goal or the dream. So with this, whatever Professor Anil Kumar has discussed with you with your own aspirations, let's just tell in a nutshell what is aspiration. So aspiration is the desire and the something longing for a better, for an improvement, for a change. We want to be uh, seeing us in a better situation. That's why we aspire for always, we aspire for something good, something better, something higher. And it's towards higher achievement. And it's towards not just with reference to achievement, but also with reference to a fulfillment in our life also comes through this. It's the driving force that actually helps us. Because of aspiration, we set our goals. Aspirations help us to set the goals. And it ultimately, it is not just for the sake of achievement, but everywhere there is an end where it is a contribution to others. It may be to the close society or in a long run, it is contribution to the progress of the nation. Here, I would like to uh, tell one or two instances which you all are familiar with. Let us just analyze the aspirations through these instances. Uh, I'm sure children, you all know Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Yes familiarly known as Gandhiji. Yes. But do you know when he was traveling, when he was in South Africa long back, when he was a young barrister, he was having a very good practice. He was prospering in his profession. But he, he when he was traveling from Durban to Pretoria in one railway station, Peter Mattisburg railway station, he was thrown out of the train because he was traveling in first class but he had the ticket of we all know the story yes you have heard about the life of gandhiji and especially this incident we always talk to our children because that's the turning point which gave us the mahatma hmm. the father who fought for the freedom of our country. But what was that driving force within him, which made him take a stand at that point when he was thrown and he was sitting on the platforms was he wanted to, the inner call he took was that he had to fight for injustice. Yes. There will be a deep seated desire for fighting. That, that's what Mohandas had in him to fight for injustice. When there is injustice, I want to raise my voice. That's where it all started. Children, have you heard of the name of Florence Nightingale? Yes. Yeah, it is. She is the person who gave nursing education a new twist, mm. a dignity to that profession. And her birthday is celebrated as International Day of the Nurses. 
do you know she had a very very luxurious life she de declined her life of luxury for a inner call she analyzed herself and she found the during the trip and war she for happiness uh, treating the patients that is the soldiers who were wounded in the war and that's where she realized that the deep call in her is serving others or reducing the pain of others that she could understand so we all have to understand there will be a deep call within all of us we have to understand that i'll give one more instance of jamshed ji tata hmm. the renowned industrialist of our country we all know the tata industries the several factories which they have what what contribution they have given to the economy of the country so jamshed ji tata once decided that he will construct hotel taj in mumbai hmm. was it only the business instinct or making money that he constructed a uh, hotel taj no. there is a story behind yes. you can find out more about it but i just want to tell you that the deep desire in him was love for his country hmm. patriotism he wanted to show the strength of india that is why he he thought of constructing that hotel and now we know hotel taj as a chain the ethical moral hospitality industry of high quality which is there in our country but the beginning or why what is that which motivated what was that desire which made jamshed ji tata to do this is the love for his country so every big contribution those who have made a big name in the field of their chosen uh, the selected field there was a inner call in all of them hmm. so it we have to identify those but in this when we say oh, what is aspiration we also get to know the importance of aspiration let me quickly take you through some of the points which says the already i have discussed the importance uh, hmm. of uh, aspiration but we'll go through one by one quickly so that we can see in ourselves how we can benefit from having aspiration if we do not have aspiration we can plan to have aspirations and work towards developing ourselves the first one is the importance of aspiration or why we should have aspiration have aspiration in our life is mainly it is a life instinct it will give a hope for our day we'll be happy to welcome the day because we are working towards reaching our goal we are seeing we are we are so happy that we are walking one step closer to our aspiration it gives us a reason for living you might have heard of uh, like usually the if you have your grandparents if you have talked to them grandparents will always have certain aspirations with reference to their children first and then with their grandchildren they will be wanting to see the success the progress of their grandchildren that aspiration actually gives them a meaning to life and a the a, a brightness in their day and it to be frank that gives us health and enthusiasm to look forward for other day and work towards that success or that aspiration which we are looking for and through because of aspiration we will have a personal growth otherwise there will be a stagnation every day is same there is no growth a change we may acquire some knowledge we may uh, look for some skill we, we may look for some um, better development in our personal life so a personal life what is that we have to identify we can identify because of aspiration what is that which we have to uh, see what is that opportunity which we have around us through which we can grow we can develop and because of this aspiration we will have higher ability to adapt ourselves to the existing situation otherwise we we don't venture into we we find it very difficult to go ahead because there are difficulties 
we have to adapt ourselves and that adaptation comes to us only and only because we have an aspiration if we have aspiration we are better adaptable to the situation and it gives psychologically it gives us a it, it gives us the identity a desire to become something it may be famous it may be uh, bringing a change a desired change in the society in my own life our own lives we can look for change and some of us uh, because I remember in the chat box for the first question you had put that you want to earn money you want to achieve something so even becoming rich can be an aspiration in some and there is positivity there is no uh, pessimism in our life oh will that be done can I really do that can I improve my scores in examination can I become that can I, I want to do that will I be able to we will do away with this uh, negativity and we will be optimistic we will look through we will each day each situation we will see that it is uh, benefit there is some uh, positivity that it is possible something uh, something good is going to happen. We are progressing. We are moving towards it. And it is highly moral, like, you know, a ethical way of life we can have if we have aspiration. Because it is uh, to work towards our aspiration, we require certain amount of honesty, integrity, and courage. These are all wonderful qualities for us in life. If we do not have aspiration, we may not be able to develop these, develop these positive qualities in us. And the ultimate is that every small thing we do, if we have society as the motto, the improvement of our surrounding or progress of our nation, our work will be much, uh, there is happiness in our work, there is satisfaction in what we do. We will be moving towards progress because we are working for the society. And quickly, I want you to do a small exercise. If not now, you just note down in your books or within you, you remember to do this. Like, you know, we need to have a clarity. What is that deep-seated calling within us? That clarity on how I have to lead my life a clarity on how, what I have to become. There should be a frame under which I have to lead my life to achieve this, to become this, what I, how I want to lead my life, what I want to become in my life, which all of us should have a framework. And if we have that framework, if we have that clarity in us, what is the desire within me? What is that value which is making me work towards it? We will have a, uh, we'll have a life with, we can have a dignified life. Dedication can be developed. We can have a disciplined life and we can work towards a success in our life. We can develop certain skills. We can, and we can, uh, have knowledge by reading by working towards our aspiration we can be developing knowledge also so this clarity will give us success in our life i'm sure all our youngsters are looking towards a happy life and a successful life to do to do this we have to there is something called as a swot analysis where all of us have to look at ourselves what is that what are my strengths? What is that I am good at? What, what am I capable of doing? We have to have a clarity about it. And then we should know our weakness, where I am uh, not good at, which is my difficulty, which is my chip. And then opportunity. If this is my life situation, this is my family, this is my school, this is my surrounding. What are the opportunities available to me in my surrounding? Because I have to make use of the opportunities to progress. And what are those threats or the challenges? Because I have to identify the challenges, then only I can work towards crossing these challenges. And I'll quickly tell about the concept of Ikigai, which, which says about the purpose in life. 
So we have to understand here you can see what is that you love to do? What is that you are good at? Do you love to do this? And are you good at it? Is my what I love to do and where is my strength? Are they matching? And what I'm doing, what I love to do, is it for the good of society? And can I be paid for what I have, what I love to do? If we can make a combination of all this, you work on it, dear students. You see what is your passion? What is your mission of your life? What is that vocation? What do you want to make a profession out of in your life? You can work towards it at an individual level. And this will actually there is a great need to know that the you within yourself. We usually miss to understand our own selves where we try to understand the outer world more, we may miss to find our own selves. So through this exercise, you will know deep inside you what is that you want to be. It is like a small exercise to find yourself, finding yourself and validating that yourself by you. You always look for validation from outside, but it is also good to validate it yourself. You find, is this is my opportunity. This is my previous experience. This is my environment. This is my support system. I have this teacher with me. I have this family member with me. Through their help, I can do this. This is self, knowing the self, and then we can also validate our own selves. Uh, there is little bit on level of aspiration because you can set a lower level for your own self and you can set a higher level to your own self. What is that if you have a lower level, what is the difficulty? If you have a, uh, the level of aspiration gives you a clear direction to work. Is it lower or do we have higher let us analyze, is it realistic? Can I really do it? Do I have that ability? Do I have the support system? Is it challenging? Nothing easy to walk and getting it is not the challenging at all. That's not aspiration at all. All of us lead a life, but there should be something challenge and we should be pushing that boundary and reach the goal. And that inner drive, that motivation should come from within. Uh, the lesser the goal, the lower the aspiration we have, it will limit our potential. The real, real potential which we have may not be coming out if we have a limited aspiration. So it is better, but initially it is good to start with the lower, but it is better to go higher and higher and go to the higher. We have to be ambitious. There is no doubt about it we have, because we have to work hard. We are capable of working hard. We have the potential and we have to go for exceptional achievement. And we all have the capacity to do that. Young children like you have that great potential to achieve. It may not be academics. It may be sports. It may be music. It may be dance or it may be any field of your choice. It may be a field of service. If you like to do, you have to find out what is that which you like to do and then we, we can work towards it. Uh, let me just end. Uh, strategies are there, but I'm sure the next panelist will talk more about it. I would like to uh, close my talk with this note of Lucia May Alcott when she says, this is very, very motivating and everybody will set aspiration and work towards it if they uh, read this sentence far away in the sunshine are my highest aspirations i may not reach them but i can look up and see their beauty so aspiration make us move towards it work towards it that itself is fulfilling actually the uh, hormones the happy hormones are produced in the journey not with the goal actually there is a problem the moment we reach the goal we realize the emptiness because physiologically that is the way we are. The dopamine hormones are secreted. 
that makes us work towards the goal. The moment we reach the goal, we have to set higher goals. That's how we are designed. That is why the moment we reach the goal, the hormone secretion stops and then we feel an emptiness. So once you get, you want to score high, you scored high, what next? You have to set the next goal. So this aspiration, it helps us to look at the beauty. The journey is beautiful. The way of reaching the goal is beautiful. Believe in them and try to follow where they lead. That itself is a satisfying life. All the best, dear children. I wish you success. I wish you happiness in your academic as well as personal life. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that wonderful explanation. You mentioned it very correctly to each according to his or her, you know, or her own. We need to introspect. We need to analyze it, what exactly we want in life. Clarity is extremely important because uh, only when we know what we want and we aspire to become that or aspire to achieve that, you know, we secrete happy hormones and these happy hormones, you know, not just uh, make us work really hard for it. They also give us the much needed satisfaction that we need as individuals, that we need, you know, as people in general, you know, this is something that we have achieved in our life. Now that we have learned about aspirations, what they are, and there are certain ways to achieve them, you know, even if you're not uh, really getting what exactly you want, you still can, you know, look at those aspirations, you can still look at your efforts and you still be satisfied that you have a goal, you have a path on which you're moving, there's a journey. And of course, they always say the journey is always more beautiful than the destination itself. And after learning about the importance of aspirations and you also highlighted, uh, you know, you quoted different individuals, some great individuals, and you also highlighted that how it is important for one's contentment and satisfaction. Professor Shalini, I would like to ask you that how do you think the students can develop their aspirations and also how can reach those aspirations? Um, yes, sir. Uh Thank you, Harpreet. And uh, taking it uh, further, yeah. uh, let me, maybe uh, there could be a little overlap. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it's I think it's important, students, that uh, we hear some of these things over and over again. Yes. Probably when it is heard more number of times, it kind of makes sense to us. True. So uh, some of these words like you know, probably you've heard this already, aspiration, inspiration, mm. dreams, ambition. You know, these are words we hear in our day-to-day -day life. But do you know what a deeper meaning and impact it has on our lives? Aspirations are the driving force. Mm. That's the driving force behind our achievements. Yes. Now, what is it? It refers to a desire mm. it's a purpose it's a direction it's a hopeful desire and i think when you hear all these words they're very positive yes it's a hopeful desire to acquire an identity to be better than what you are now and aspiration is what young students like you hope to achieve in the future. If you ask me, why should we aspire? Just to add to what Dr. Anil and Dr. Gaurama have said, it allows us to look at who we are, yes. what we want in life, and how we can get there. And when you discover your aspirations, you find meaning, you find purpose, you find a direction, and ultimately, happiness. All of us want to be happy in life. True. And when we use these words, aspirations and goals, very often these words are used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. But there's a small difference between aspiration and goals. Goals are targets you set to reach your aspirations. So what does aspiration indicate? It indicates our motivation to achieve something. Now, how do we develop these aspirations? Well, let us understand that aspirations 
in some ways, it's determined by our environment. Now, when I say environment, it includes parental ambitions, societal expectations, sometimes peer influence, and it could also be social values. Like say, for example, maybe some of you out there may say, I aspire to be a doctor. And if I ask you why, your response may be because my parents want me to be a doctor. Now, you must be careful here. If your aspirations align with your parental aspirations, you know, we call it as shared aspirations. My parents want me to be a doctor. I too want to be a doctor. Now, if your aspirations align with your parental aspirations, it works positively for you. But if your aspirations are different, but you force yourself to fulfill somebody's desire, then this mismatch will result in frustration, failure, and unhappiness. So our aspirations should match with the potential and abilities that we have. Of course, it's important for us to dream, but it is equally important for us to be realistic about our dreams, realistic about our aspirations, realistic about our goals. What should a student do to make sure that their aspirations are realistic? I would say, take the help of a parent or a teacher or a guidance professional or a counselor and analyze your strengths, abilities, or potentials. Now, when you analyze your strengths, generally you look at your previous performance and then you set your next level of aspiration. I would say expose yourself to a variety of opportunities and tasks and then just sit back and reflect on whether it was interesting, whether it was stimulating, it was challenging, something that could you could be passionate about. If your answer is yes, then set your aspirations. Whether you aspire to be a doctor or an engineer or a pilot, a teacher, a researcher, a musician, an actor, or anything, you should have clarity regarding your aspirations. Just put down your aspirations by asking questions like, what do I like to pursue and achieve in the future? Where do I like to see myself 10 years from now? What are some of the tasks and activities that I would like to achieve or experience in the future? Just try putting down answers to these questions. Try new things. Gather information about yourself. Now, a piece of caution here, you don't have to compare yourself with others. Your aspirations may be different from that of others and aspirations need not be grand and lofty. Set aspirations that are meaningful and fulfilling to you. You can seek out stories for inspiration. Like you, you heard a few names that were mentioned previously. Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Abdul Kalam, Ms. Alcott, Florence Nightingale, 
Seek out stories for inspiration. Steve Jobs, maybe that's more recent. Sometimes inspiration turn into aspirations. For example, when you read or maybe listen to the biographies or stories of great personalities, their stories will inspire you to aspire to be probably an investor, a politician, a neuroscientist, an architect. Once you set your level of aspiration, what's very important, important is commitment. You have to commit yourself to achieving it. Aspirations will just remain in the cloud if you do not take any steps to achieve it. The steps that you take can be small, concrete, achievable ones. Why I say achievable ones is this gives you confidence to set a higher level of aspiration. For example, you aspire to write a book. Then the goals to achieve your aspiration would be practice writing daily, take courses in writing, write to your school magazine, participate in story writing, essay writing competitions. When you achieve each of the targets you have set, your aspirations become bigger and closer to realization like writing a book. Your aspirations could be related to academics, health, career, relationships. Do you know that even personal factors like your personality can also determine your aspirations other than the environment? It could be your self-esteem, your motivation, self-efficacy. Just to elaborate, do you feel good about yourself? Do you see yourself as capable? Do you believe in your ability to complete or accomplish or achieve a task? We call this belief in your capacity to complete a task as self-efficacy. It's a very, very important component in turning aspirations into achievement. Because it's your belief in your capacity that would decide the course of action that you will take, the effort that you will put in, and whether you would persevere in the face of obstacles to really realize your aspirations. This is just a simple exercise. Probably you could do it at leisure. I would say first identify the area that seems important to you in life. Like maybe for you as a student, let's assume it is education. Then the next step would be for you to write down what is it that you want to achieve in this area of life, in this area of education? Why? Because we build aspirations from what we want to achieve or improve. So if it's education, maybe your aspiration is to get a doctoral degree. So you aspire to obtain a doctorate degree. Let's take the example of you aspire to be a musician. The goals you have to set and achieve are, first, you have to expose yourself to music. Then you have to listen to music. You have to learn music. It could be vocals, it could be instruments. Then you have to practice daily. You have to hone your skills. You have to find opportunities to participate in events. It could be small, it could be big, it could, be, it, it could start in your own school. Then probably it could happen in your community, in your neighborhood. Now along this journey, you may make a lot of mistakes. 
But what's important here is you need to persevere. You need to be resilient. Even when you're faced with obstacles, you tell yourself that it's OK, but I will still continue. I have a goal. I have an aspiration. My aspiration is to be a musician. So your entire journey may be bumpy, but ultimately, the happiness is yours. So the last step is to put down how you plan to achieve this. I've just given you an example of if you want to be a musician, you aspire to be a musician. These are some of the steps that you could take. So a series of achievable tasks, maybe from, say, if we are going back to uh, your aspiration in the area of education and wanting to obtain a doctoral degree. Then a series of achievable tasks could be obtaining consistent grades from school to pre-university pre and then narrowing down your interest in one subject and then choosing a university, a research guide and finally a doctor prefix to your name. You may encounter many bumps along the road to achieving your aspirations, but remember, if you are resilient, these efforts to aspire will help you achieve your dreams. I want to leave you with these words. Let these words resonate. I want these, road, these words to resonate. Dream, aspire, and achieve. And I'm actually very excited to share these thoughts for the simple reason that aspiration and achievement was the research that I undertook 28 years ago. Wow, lovely. And it's amazing that I, I have an opportunity to share these thoughts with you 28 years later. Students, I wish you all the best. Dream, aspire, and achieve. Thank you so much. Well, that was lovely, and I can say that life has come a full circle for you. You took this research study, and of course, um, you earned your degree, and then you worked, you gained experience, and today you are on this platform sharing those valuable experiences with us. Uh, of course, I'm sure that you have, uh, you know, touched upon various things that you might have presented in your thesis also. So thank you so much for that lovely uh, explanation. And yes, you're absolutely right that it is very important to know what exactly do we want in life and to have the clarity because we take inspiration from all these great people out there. You know, they aspired something, they had the passion, the burning desire, and then they achieved it. So that speaks all. And it's very important for the students to develop those aspirations because unless and until they have a goal, they have a purpose, they really don't know what they want to do in life. So it is important to understand and explore, to introspect and see where your aspirations are taking you. Are they aligning with your inner core, with somebody who you really are? Are they really defining something that you want to do? Like we took the example of Florence Nightingale. You know, she had this passion, that burning desire to serve the people, to serve the wounded. And her aspiration took her to a journey which made her a great example of service to humankind. And now, after learning about, uh, you know, uh, these ways to develop aspirations and how we can reach there, especially the students, uh, Manoja ma'am, I would like to ask you, you know, the big and the final question that is directly related to the topic that we are discussing today, that how can students transform their aspirations to achievements? And could you please uh, provide some practical tips also? Because this is something that concerns us all, whether we are students, working professionals, anybody. If you want to change the trajectory, we have the aspirations, don't have the guidance. What are the tips that you would like to share with all of us? Manoja ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
this is a very beautiful thing uh, this topic is a beautiful topic that uh, something which i always uh, appreciated uh, and practiced uh, in my own life mm. uh, so i would encourage all of you students to be mindfully listening to everything that was shared over here and practice it uh, in your day to day life okay what happens most of the time is our aspirations are this high but our achievement is this level or we dream big but we don't put in any effort because we don't know what to do mm. and we don't know how to go about it because of which we are not able to uh, fulfill the aspiration that we have or reach to the level that uh, of idea we have of what to become in life or what to do in life i would like to uh, empty number of examples have been already quoted but even as uh, we look into how to practically achieve uh, our aspirations and uh, how to do it uh, practically hmm. i would like to look into the example of a person called a sports person called pt usha who hmm. is an olympian all right okay uh, she is somebody whom i admire so much not just because we are from the same state but someone who is coming from a very low socio economic background from where even if she would have uh, dreamed at that point of time of becoming uh, what she had become later was impossible to happen but how did it happen it happened obviously that's why today we know her as olympian pt usha and she runs an institute and uh, training a lot of youngsters to get into the uh, career of sports and achieve what she has achieved as it was already pointed out earlier having an example of certain people ahead of us and how they have achieved what they have achieved in life or what they aspire uh, is uh very motivating and very encouraging for, for us to do so that we can be sure of the fact that if they could make it if their aspiration turned into achievement it is possible for me and you all of us to do that isn't it so yes it is possible i am sure that all of you who are here have some aspiration in life but one of the most important thing when we think of aspiring dreaming or desiring or fulfilling of the aspiration is to vision now let's take the example of pt usha she came from a remote village in kerala and she started her, uh, she was studying in school i think she was hardly 9 or 10 years then she had a vision that is she had a desire or she want had decided or at least thought of it that i want to become a sports person that is called a vision vision is something that long term but it can be broken into did she over, on uh, one night overnight become a uh, olympian no it all started off participating in school competitions uh, running races a different variety of uh, uh, running races and uh, she had as she was able to do that she was motivated and driven to think of taking sports as a career in her life to become a runner and a thelet that is called a vision so it is very important for us to have a vision now just dreaming is it 
enough. No, it is good to talk about it, to think about it, and to write about what is it that I want to do long term in my life. I would say I became a clinical psychologist. That is uh, what I am uh, doing as a profession. When I was four or five years old, there were two of my neighbors who had mental illness. I was so fascinated by the fact that both, uh, how are their brains functioning? Now, I started thinking that I desire at the age of 10 years or maybe less than that, that I wanted to become a mental health professional. At that time, I was not aware of clinical psychology as a profession, but I knew that I wanted to become a mental doctor, a doctor who would help. So that was my vision. That was my desire. Now, I made some plans as to how to go about it. Just like when we look at Preeti Usha, uh, we understand that she started, uh, is it just having a vision? lying down on bed and thinking of becoming a star or becoming a wrist or a mental health profession or a doctor or a sports person or a teacher or a writer or a, you know astronaut even uh, you know it doesn't happen we have to articulate it write down and make some goals long term goals and short term goals. The next step is to make plans as to how to go about this. You know, we have to make sorted plans. In Pete Usha's case, she decided uh, to get coaching for running uh, athletics. And she's part of a started pack. Uh, she made plans to um, uh, participate in sports in school level, then in district level, then in state level, then at national level, and it reached to international level. Obviously, when we think of uh, Olympics, mm. it is internationally. So she had broken down her aspirations into manageable tasks. By when will I be able to finish this task? And the next level, how will I be able to go ahead? There has to be definite and concrete plans. Now, when we make plans, there are a lot of challenges that's coming. You know, uh, the, for example, for P.T. Usha, she uh, fell down and broke her leg. She had to have to put a fracture. But did she give up on that? No, she did not give up on that. She had a growth mindset. So first, I spoke about having a vision, then having a specific and clear, achievable uh, goals or plans. And how to fulfill those plans are these goals, long-term goals as well as short-term goals. Now, when we have a growth mindset, there will be a lot of setbacks. You no, know, overnight we cannot become Olympian. She had to go to a lot of challenges. It could be that uh, people in her home discouraged her from participating, uh, going because those days a girl getting into sports, that to athletics, and uh, you know. You know how an athlete is presented in public uh, when you uh, are doing sports. A lot of uh, factors were there which would have actually challenged her and prevented her from going ahead. Did she stop with that? No. She had been prepared even if challenges are coming from one's own family, from society, due to sickness. Uh, due to uh, financial difficulties, due to, there will be a lot of social, emotional factors also. You feel discouraged, disappointed, and you just don't want to go ahead. It 
can happen. But if we are very sure of what we want to achieve in life or we are thinking of or aspiring, you know, there is something called resilience. That is coming back, bouncing back. All of us have a tendency to fall. Then we get up, pick courage again, and go forward. So uh, taking measures to cut down all these challenges or overcoming these challenges is the mindset that we have to develop. Yes, I want to become an Olympian. I want to become an athlete. I want to represent uh, my nation in, in before the world, I want to uh, bring my nation's name and bring honor to my nation. It's a commitment. It yes. is a growth mindset with a commitment to fulfill what we want to fulfill. True. So commitment is a very one of the important aspects, just like motivation. We need to be uh, motivated. The other madams have already spoken about uh, motivation and, you know, they are going uh, forward with it. Next is having an attitude of learning. We have to engage when we uh, aspire about uh, something. We uh, already heard about reading autobiography of, uh, uh, you know, great minds uh, who have achieved and fulfill their aspirations in their life. In the same way, it is important for us to have someone to guide us. Yes. The people who will guide us, people in authority. For example, in Piti Usha's case, she had a coach. Hmm. The coach's name was M.N. Nambiar, and he was a coach. Now, Coach is somebody who was walking along with her in the same way. It is good to have a person, somebody who will be ready to guide us, help us. Even when there is a setback or we fall back or where is a, there is a failure or when we are stuck, we do not know how to go forward. Then there is this person encouraging, telling it doesn't matter. Hmm. Yeah, you can go forward. It is okay. And they share their experiences of failures. And then they say, yes, you can go. I trust in you. I have seen the qualities that you have. And so there is somebody to whom you are accountable in the sense that what does it mean to be accountable? Somebody who will coach you, somebody who will guide you, somebody who will help you. Yes. This can be even... Uh, the books that you read, it could be lives of certain people, autobiography, or it can be a teacher, a guide, a coach, a helper. You know, it can be your own parents. It doesn't matter who it is. Hmm. But what matters is there has to be somebody, you know, when you fall back, will support, stand by you, encourage you and push you to go forward so that you will not have a setback and think that finished. This is all. I cannot go forward. You know, this this is it. There are situations in uh, uh, in I would say I would just give an example. You know, first time when I gave my entrance for my clinical psychology, I didn't make it. You know, I was discouraged, mm. disappointed, but my parents stood with me encouraged me and told me, no, we have trust in you. We know you can, you know, you take one year off, sit and prepare, give next time. It happened. So it is what happened. Rest is history. Mm -hmm. So today I'm a clinical psychologist, able to specialize in child and adolescent mental health, helping a lot of young students, uh, even, um, you know, senior students. Mm -hmm. So, why I'm giving my example is something that I've gone through. If I have gone through, I have achieved. It is also possible for all of you students to uh, do it. So having a mentor and then having a continuous attitude of learning. You know, we have to in, uh, increase our uh, knowledge, increase our physical strength, our emotional strength, our understanding. 
understanding, uh, knowledge, and our skills to aspire uh, uh, to uh, achieve what we are aspiring and what we are uh, wanting to uh, become in uh, life. Gee. Now, another practical technique that I would want to tell you is a technique called visualization. It is a very powerful technique. Now, all that it enhances your motivation would help to increase your confidence and sharpen your focus towards achieving your goal. Now, what is it? It's a very simple technique which all of us can do. All of you, I'm sure, young students are imaginative. Now, make it a conscious effort to sit down quietly and imagine in your mind that you have reached your goal and you are succeeding. No, it is a major technique that works in our brain. No, see, one thing I want to tell you students, our brain actually doesn't have the capacity to know what is real and what is false. Hmm. Okay, now when we visualize like that and focus on the success, our brain also starts functioning in such a way that you will start moving towards your goal with confidence and uh, periodically visiting your and visualizing helps us to move towards motivation, to be motivated and to achieve the goal. I myself have practiced this and I have found it coming, uh, becoming real because the brain starts noticing it. Now the brain will start functioning in such a way that it will motivate you to move towards that particular thing that you have visualized and imagined and move, push you forward and gives you the courage. All that you need to do is to have a mental picture hmm. that will reinforce the aspiration, which will boost your confidence, will increase your enthusiasm to move towards that long-term goal or the aspiration or the desire that uh, you have. Now, I was talking about setbacks or challenges or fallouts or failures at times. So celebrating the sm small wins in art. For example, P.T. Usha had won the first athletic meet in her school. No, and encouraged by that she decided that i will go ahead and do the district level i will i have to continuously train myself do hard work do physical exercise have good nutrition and good food and hours of practice and how to in, uh, improve my skills and knowledge of becoming a better athlete hmm. you know this is possible when we are able to celebrate a small wins. I would say baby steps. Enjoy, encourage and celebrate your small, small, small wins. You know, it may not be a big thing. But, oh, I, I could only this much. If that is the attitude... celebrating and one of the secrets that mm. I would uh, say that don't give up. Hmm. Right. Never give Persistence, up. the story of the hare and the tortoise, yes. never giving up. Mm. Okay. Now, one more point I want to highlight, you know, there are certain barriers when it comes to achieving your aspirations. One uh, important uh, aspect is 
finding out what are the barriers. It could be fear of failure. It could be lack of motivation. Or it could be procrastinating. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Yes. If then and there, if you will not do, tomorrow might never come. You would have heard of Ganesha's wedding. You know, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And that tomorrow never came. Let it not be our case, friends. Okay. And negative talks. It's not possible for me. I can't make it. I failed this time. You know, so it's just not possible for me. A lot of negative talks. Keep a check on what you are thinking. There is a saying which says, what you think is what you become. Yes. If you think that I can, I will, then you can. So checking on a lot of negative thoughts you have to overcome. Then there are times when there are external circumstances which will not per permit us to become what we aspire. It could be an illness, financial difficulty. And in case of P.T. Usha, she came from a very financially, but it not, that did not stop her from becoming what mm. she was aspiring and achieving the long-term goal of becoming an Olympian. Okay, and another thing that I want to tell you is comfort zones. As young students, we would like to be stuck in our comfort zones. We want to take any initiative and we don't want to overcome the comfort zones. Identifying comfort zones are the areas where, you know, we don't want to shake it. We don't want to get out of it. Oh, you know, I cannot run if P.T. Ursha would have thought that, you know, uh, I will never be able to run because I had a fracture. Yeah. And lying down on bed is a comfort zone, right? So lying down uh, with a cast for six months, it did not stop her, it did not prevent. So she had the willingness to uh, come out of this barriers. Yes. So uh, this is what I want to encourage you all. All the best. I'm sure all of you, my students who are here, you all will be able to have your aspirations and follow the practical steps that we have discussed. I'm sure you will definitely be able to achieve your dream and fulfill the dream that you're dreaming for yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your journey with us and, of course, for sharing P.T. Usha's journey as well. Uh, both are exemplary and, of course, uh, for uh, Ms. P.T. Usha, it said that when her fans all over the globe wanted her, to, you know, uh, wanted to send her a mail, letter, I mean to say, they never wrote her complete address, Ms. P.T. Usha, India, and that was enough. So that was, yeah. um, you know, her stature, her caliber, you know, took her to the places and, of course, she became what she is uh, today. And aspirations were behind that and her determination was behind that her clarity come what may rain or shine she did her efforts and anybody who wants to become something in life they have to be there they have to be stuck they have to be stubborn on what they want to do because if you want to be a strong person if you want to have the strength you know uh, for uh, anything in life you will not get it in your comfort zone. You have to come out of it. And only after facing challenges, you will become an epitome of strength. So thank you so much, ma'am, for that lovely answer and for sharing those wonderful tips. And uh, of course, uh, you know, you have uh, shown us that uh, even if the situations are against you or you are swimming against the tide, you can still reach your destination provided you have the courage and aspiration here definitely can be transformed to your achievements. So that was our discussion today, my dear viewers, regarding transform your aspirations to achievements. And I would like to thank all our panelists for this wonderful discussion, a great conversation, and uh, for sharing so many tips and beautiful insights uh, on this particular concept. I would like to thank them all, Professor Anil Kumar K., Professor I.P. Gorama, Dr. Shalini Ayappa, and Ms. Manoja Jacob. Thank you so much for your valuable contribution to this session. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Right. So, viewers, it's time now for me to wrap up this particular discussion of Manodarpan Paricharcha, where we learned about this uh, amazing 
topic or theme, whatever you may call it, that how we can transform our aspirations into achievements. I'm sure you got all the valuable information and insights and you can definitely, you know, uh, watch this discussion again once it's uploaded on our YouTube channel. And if at all there is anything that still bothers you, you can always check out our website that is uh, www.manodarpan.education.gov.in for all the answers, for all the concerns. We always share our phone numbers with you. Our national telehelpline number is also there. So just you know, consult a psychologist, consult a counselor, express yourself, anything that's bothering you, and do come out of that gloom because that doesn't suit you. So to all the parents, teachers, and students out there, we wish you all the best. It's a wrap. And this is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you from this beautiful session of Manodarpan Paricharja. I'll see you soon. Take care. Namaskar. नहीं है हिचकिचाना मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ मनोदर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू